If we're interested in small drops or bubbles, they'll tend to be spherical as long as surface tension is pulling them into that round shape. But if there's a velocity of fluid coming and flowing over them, they'll tend to deform and may break up into smaller bubbles or drops. And what determines that breakup is the ratio between these inertial forces due to this velocity and the surface tension forces that are tending to pull that bubble or drop back into a spherical shape. So if we want to compare the ratio of inertial forces to surface forces, we need to reach back and get each of them. Our inertial force, we know from looking before, will look something like Fi, which will be proportional to the density, the velocity squared, and the length squared. If we compare that to a surface tension force, the Fs value that we came up with before looking at the effects of surface tension, then that will be proportional to the surface tension times the length scale. So the ratio of inertial forces to surface forces will depend on the density, the velocity squared times the length squared, divided by the surface tension times the length. Or, if we cancel out the, uh, the lengths, we'll wind up with rho u squared L over sigma. Density, surface tension, velocity squared, and the size of the scale that we're looking at. And when we notice this, we can say that's a nice dimensionless number. And that was first picked up by Moritz Weber. And he got the number named after him as the Weber number. And that's usually expressed as WE, and it's equal to rho u squared L over sigma. Density, velocity squared, length over surface tension. And it's going to be important whenever we're looking at drops or bubbles or other situations where surface tension becomes significant in our, in our flow behavior. Now, for drops and bubbles, if Weber number is less than around 10, drops and bubbles don't break up. They stay stable. And the result is that this Weber number, this maximum Weber number around 10, determines the maximum size that a raindrop can be. If we have a raindrop falling through the air, there'll be a velocity associated with its falling, whatever speed it's falling at, and the size of the drop, the bigger it gets, the larger the drag forces and other inertial forces are going to be on that drop as it's falling faster and faster compared to the surface tension forces. And once it gets large enough, it'll tend to bulge out and eventually break up into multiple considerably smaller droplets as time goes on. So the Weber number will tell us how that drop behaves over time and tells us what the maximum size of raindrops will be, for example. More important from an engineering standpoint, it also tells us how small we can get drops of fuel if we're trying to atomize a fuel or liquid fuel combustion, a really key mechanical engineering application. Most flows that we'll look at don't have significant surface tension effects, so the Weber number won't show up in most of the fluid mechanics courses you'll take.